Hello, everyone. Welcome. 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 What's going on? How, how's your week been? Me, my week. Just oh, started. Today, oh. I was about to say it's today. Monday. Ooh. It feels like the week has like yeah. gone already. Yeah. Um, but you know, um, happy to be here, happy to be with the people. Yeah. Um, how's your week been going or your weekend? Um, so it was a pretty laid back weekend, and today it I'm tired. Um, long day at work. <laughs> Um, but I do work at home on Monday, so that makes it easy. But I am excited about tonight's show. Um, yes. The lineup is crazy. We have some great panelists tonight. Um, and, you know, I think it was the perfect show for Mother's Day, which was yesterday. So, again, happy uh, Mother's Day to all of the mothers out there. Um, you know, even though it was yesterday, Mother's Day is actually every day. Because without the mothers, we wouldn't be here. Absolutely. 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 Um, so before we go into our panel, um, you know, I'm sure people that watch our show every month see that um, we are one co-host short tonight. Um, um, our our, our co-host, um, our team member, Jamel Khan, has relocated outside of the D.C. area. So um, unfortunately, he will no longer be a co-host for us. So um, if anyone has been out there and been seeing the post, if anyone is interested in being a co-host, um, visit us on our Facebook page. There's an application you can fill out, and um, we'll start pulling you up. And we'll, we'll you know, we're going to work out something to have different co-hosts until we select our permanent co-host. But in the meantime, for today, we have the icon, the mother, the, the mother of the house of exclusive live band, the one and only. Kiana. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome, Kiana. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm good. How, how you doing today? Long day, new work week. Just, I'm tired. <laughs> tired. Okay, okay. We get it. We get it completely. Um, You excited about the show tonight? I am excited Um, to have the ladies on. As you said, Dante, um, every day is Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. And happy... Mm -hmm belated Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, whether you have a mother living or not, ha happy Mother's Day as well. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Kiana, you want to take a moment just for anyone that don't know you, just tell them folks a little bit about yourself, your born history, who you are, I, stuff like I that. knew you was going to pull that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm the mother. I'm the, I'm, it's the mother. I'm, 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 um, what can I say? Um, I'm Kiana Lanvin, um, icon for realness. Um, I've been um, in the game um, since 1993 walking. And um, I'm just me. I'm just, I'm me. That's all <laughs> I, I'm just here and to be a part of uh, your platform. And thank you for um, inviting me and stuff like that. No, of course, thank you for being available to be our first guest host on here. And I felt like it was just such, we felt like it was just such the fitting episode or the segment to have you to be the guest um, <laughs> co-host for. Joe <laughs> Tipton said since the plane. <laughs> um, I, I think we have a spam. <laughs> but I'm going to be uh, nice today. Let's go. Yeah, but speaking of that, let's just go ahead and get into it. Um, because yes. we do have a nasty lineup. Um, yes. and the girls are beat, and <laughs> let's get them up here. Let's get this started. Um, so our first um guest that we're gonna bring panelists that we're gonna bring up is my sister. We were actually in the house for 13 years together, and she moved on to become the overall mother of the house of West. It is the one and only legendary film queen performance, Asia West, overall mother. Welcome to the show. Hi, everyone. Hey. Nisi, yeah. What's going on? How's your day going? It's going good so far. I just got back in the house. OK, OK. Good, good. Um, you excited about the show tonight? Definitely. There's some dope mothers on here, though. 
Okay. Um, you want to um plug the ball real quick? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, July tenth. Um, the you know the amazing house of West will be having its first fall, so definitely come out. It's going to be mm -hmm. amazing. But energy, good vibes. Just come bring that shit and put on. That's it. North Carolina is going to be go, something. Right. I am not wait. North Carolina. Yes, let me see. Yes. Yeah. Like this every night. Yeah, I can't wait. I think it's definitely probably the most anticipated ball, if not the most anticipated. The only one that I think could come closer right now would probably be maybe the ball main ball, but I think y'all may yeah. have the most anticipated for sure. A little close, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all make sure y'all are there. Um, let's yes. go ahead and bring up the next. I actually was in a house, or we were in a house with her as well. <laughs> we were all in the same house at 1.2. <laughs> <laughs> to become a mother of another house, and that is the legendary, gorgeous Gucci overall mother, Lola. Gorgeous Gucci, Hi welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you. What's going on, Lola? How's your day going? Hi, sis. How are you, Kiana? Beautiful. How are you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My brother Dante. Yeah, so happy to be here. Thank you so much happy for to having me. How are you feeling? I'm me? feeling good. Good, good. Yes. Um, Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, we hear you. Yes, we hear you. You excited about um, the panel tonight? Okay, cool. I am. I mean, you know, um, it's so great to have, like, all these beautiful ladies come on this panel because, you know, it just represents the ballroom. And, you know, we are the overall mothers of each and everyone houses and you know we they definitely have a say in a lot of the things that happens in ballroom and we have a lot of inspiration and um you know we just bring that so it's great that we can all bring these energies together and kind of like you know remember ballroom and can make other people understand what ballroom is all about yes yes definitely Absolutely. and i think it's important to remember that ballroom was created on the girls yep so I think Period. we did this. That's probably important to make sure we did this. Head clean. Yes. yes. <laughs> Wonderful thing to have us ladies together. Definitely. Yes, yes, yes. Next up, we have um, an overall mother who, um, she's a new overall mother. However, she's not new to the scene. She is the second $5,000 Fem Queen Face winner. She is the legendary overall mother, Amaya Mason Margella. Also known as Cotton from Star. Hi, sis. What's going on? Um, <laughs> here, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here with you, ladies. Happy Mother's Day, and yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How's your day, man? Pretty good, pretty good. I mean, it's not much to do. Um, like, I think we're still adjusting from COVID and everything, but I'm just trying to make the most of it. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Are um, you looking forward to the panel tonight? Yeah, I am. I, I mean, I love it when we're all together. These are all my sisters in one way or another. So, yeah. Um, hi, Poon. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, next, we have, back to my house again, um, our, <laughs> our current overall mother of the house of Balenciaga. She is um, legendary film queen face and the first 5,000 the perfect 10. Shannon, overall legendary mother Balenciaga. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, everyone. What's going on? I'm loving, I'm loving this room. It's so wrapped up in Balenciaga. <laughs> <laughs> A little papa. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, Hi Mother Balenciaga. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. How's your day? <sighs> Hectic. Y'all don't understand. Let me, let me say, ladies, let's, let's just tell the guys. We're sick of putting on all this makeup. <laughs> it is hard work. I'm tired to run around and do everything by yourself and then have to paint in here. And all. It's exhausting. So. Every day, too, is like. Y'all make it look so good, though. Yeah. And you can't go to bed with it on. So. <laughs> but look, y'all make it look effortless. Oh, God. Yes, yes. If you all see, there's going to be some comments from our viewers on Facebook and YouTube. James um, Icon said, ladies, happy Mother's Day. Love y'all. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Thank you, James. 
And now we have the overall, the icon, the overall godmother of the house of Como de, wait, Como de Garcia. Como de Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> you had to give me a second. I was having a little slow moment. Of Garcon, the one and only Stasha Garcon. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi. Hey, there she goes. Hey, there. What's Hi, going everybody. on? We meet Nothing. again. Nothing, how's everything? Hey, How's everybody doing? how are you? Hi, gorgeous ladies. How's your day? <laughs> no, you had a show earlier today. Oh, uh, well, no, I had a show last night in my, okay. I had a sh show in Miami last night, but I had a show in Atlanta yesterday evening. Then I flew to Miami yesterday to perform last night and then I flew back today. Oh. Yes. Well, thank you for being well, here with us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you for that. Stay booked. Yes. Um, is our last <laughs> ready? Yes, she's ready. Okay, okay. All right, and then lastly but not least, we have another new overall mother. She is the overall mother of the house of Tishi. Um, she is newer to ballroom, however, she is known throughout the pageant scene, and that is overall mother Tishi Giselle. Hi, everybody. Hi, ladies. Hey, Hi. Hi. Pardon my part of my tardiness um thank god sasha called and woke me up <laughs> <laughs> i um uh, i'm happy to be here um i'm 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 on a tv show um every day it's called the point of view and mm -hmm. uh, we get up very early and I, I fortunately enough like shannon said we have to wear makeup every day and I, i'm fortunate enough to have somebody to do my makeup every day but when i got off today i took everything off i was like i need a nap and I kind of overslept. So um, I appreciate you all for having me. Um, it's very exciting uh, being in ballroom. I followed ballroom now for about uh, 17 years now, but I chose to do pageants um, over ballroom. And once I completed my journey in pageant, I transitioned over to um, ballroom. And I'm just excited to be in the position that I'm in. I was very afraid, very scared to, to um, take on being over uh, overall mother but i'm very happy to <laughs> well i think that you're doing an amazing job i mean I, the first time i seen you was every everything i feel yes yeah. <laughs> i view that i view thank that you. a couple of times Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you for being on the floor and just keep continuing to do what you do. You are priceless. Keep doing what you do. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all for all being here again tonight um, with us. Um, Latoya Ebony was actually overall legendary overall. Um, Latoya Ebony was supposed to be on the panel as well, but she did hit me up earlier today and said that something came up. She actually ended up working later. She expected, it, but she won't be here with us tonight. Um, but shout outs to her. Um, and shout outs to all of the other mothers. Unfortunately, you know, we could only have a panel of seven um, seven people. So we couldn't put somebody from every single house. We try to move it around each show, each panel, but there was no way we could get everybody up here. If we could, we would. But I think we got almost every overall mother, which was kind of really our, our purpose. That's what we was looking for. Um, and you're going to change the display now? <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, why not? Me. You know what? We're going to go with it like this because, um, and I'll just highlight people as they talk. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So you want to go? All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, ladies, we're going to roll right into the is first Is it ringing question. a little bit for you guys? Huh? Is it, is it who? Is it like, is the sound breaking just a little bit? Because for mine is, yeah, mine is too. Yeah, it's like it's like blinking a little bit. Yeah. No, I hear you all perfect. I can hear good too. Um. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, I oh, maybe adjust the volume. Make sure your volume not at a hundred percent. I know sometimes that can affect it, some kind of way. I learned that from Diga, but um, but let's test okay. it out now. All right. So let's let me see comments. This is an epic panel. Oh. Shout out to Jovan. Awesome. Yes, awesome. All right. 
Sorry, I was texting my boss. Oh, she was asking me about all you ladies. Oh. All right. So, um, okay, they said they can hear you all. We can hear y'all. All right. So let's go ahead and launch with the first question. And this question goes out to anybody, really. Um, you know, you can take, you know, answer whenever you're ready. What made you get into ballroom? Anybody can go first. Okay, so what made me get into ballroom? I'll kick it off since everybody will be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe it or not, like I spoke on the the on legendary, I talked about my prison stint, and my mother. I never knew anything about ballroom or Paris is burning or any of those things, and. Everybody was like, girl, you've never heard of it? No, I haven't. Um, I grew up in a time period where, to be told, this is the 90s. Having people visual out there, visible, wasn't normal. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't see it. I didn't have anybody to guide me, to give me any type of inspiration to see. So being in the world by yourself. You do things by yourself and you make a way by yourself. Um, so I was I, I was hesitant. I told them, no, I'm not going. I don't want to be around that. That ain't me. All those things, I fought it and fought it and fought it. And we, we got out, believe it or not, we got out the day behind each other out of prison. And she was like, come to DC. I was in Virginia and she was in DC. And I said, I'm going to come and visit you. And she took me around my sister and introduced me. And I started seeing everybody. I went to the ball the next day. And I saw my other sister, Ayana, come in. I saw my other sister, Shanice, come in the ball. And Shanice just captivated me. It was mesmerizing the way this woman came through this door and stopped the show. And I was like, Oh my God, I have to do this too. I want to be a part of it. And that's what made me do it. And everybody was like, who is this, this cunt? Who is this cunt? Why is she here? And I didn't, I didn't get to be inducted into the house. I was thrown into the house because my mother was the grandmother, mother of the house. It wasn't a choice. Bitch, you coming in. And so that was my introduction into ballroom. So it was, it was Mickey books. Awesome. Okay. Oh, I go next. Um, well, I guess I'll go next. So my first time watching the ball was in New Orleans. I was 15. Uh, tapes would trickle down there. We didn't really have a huge scene. Um, tapes, I saw people like Stasha, I saw Josh, uh, Shanice. I mean, like that whole, like the era and group of people. And I was so amazed. Like Hurricane Katrina hit when I was 17. So my parents evacuated to Atlanta. So though um, we lost everything, and I think I'm escaped past it because I've worked past it. But that was very devastating for me and my family. We literally lost everything, um, but it gave me the chance to start over. So I came out here. Um, I mean, I finally saw like, the world that I could relate to, to be honest. Uh, like I met Sasha, met Tempers, met all the girls. I was a very young kid, um, kind of too young to be in a club, you know, uh, but I made it. And um, I felt like I found my family. I felt like I found like a slight calling. I felt like I, I um, found my tribe, you know, people people who were like me or people who knew the things that I, were, I was going through. So I think that it saved my life. The barroom scene definitely did, and it kicked off in Atlanta. Um, and I stormed, bitch, y'all know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know, that's right. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> I'll say to me, um, how I got into barroom, I used to go to... Um, Hatrick Martins, which is like a, uh, an institute for lesbian and LGBT community. And it's basically like transfer school. And back in my school, um, they didn't want me to like dress up as a girl. And so when I got to Hatrick, that's when I started like dressing up as a girl. And then, then um, for activities um, after school, there will be like little balls, like little mini balls. And then that's how I started um, learning about 
balls and then I went to my first ball, which was the latex ball. And then I started like being like really addicted to it. And then I and then I and then I joined the house, which was the house block. Awesome. Shout out to Hetrick Martin. HMI mm -hmm. at New York. Right? Yep. Shout out to HMI. HMI. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for I, me, I, 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 oh, you yeah, go ahead. Okay. Oh, so for me, um, how I got into ballroom, it, I was 16 years old, and I went over to a friend's house, and they were playing a VHS tape of a ball, and it was um uh, they were it was during the segment of the um the realness category, and I saw it was not realness or face, but I remember seeing um Trigony, and I said no way. I said, I said, no way. And, you know, at this time, I, you know, just started my transition and I'm looking like, they all look like girls. They all look like girls. How, how, how? And I was like, I could never look like that. And my friend, she would say, yes, you can. Yes, you can. I'm telling you, yes, you can. Your sound went out. Oh, your sound went out. All right. Um, so, so that's when I became obsessed with ballroom, and that was in my mind. If the ones that look like real girls, they do the balls, and so um, I I went to uh, my first ball. Uh, Karen Cover Girl from New York, she passed away. Mm. Karen mm. Cover Girl took me to my first ball, which was the lace the latex ball, and. When I saw, when I looked around and I saw all the girls, I saw uh, I saw Stephanie Milan, and it just blew me away when I saw her. And I just knew I knew that's I wanted to do it immediately. I knew that's what I wanted to do. Mm. Shout out to Karen. Had lots of fun with Karen up in New York. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, so I'm gonna. Um, so me, when I was when I was young, was kind of um, I would say um, a little bit more hard and rocky. So I I was at, I was in um, a group home called um, Fantasy, and I had um, I was in a living room with Champagne, um, Katrina, and this boy named Tega, and they just started dancing and voguing, and I was looking at them to um, dance and that type of stuff. Um, that type of lane, I would say, I was attached immediately. It was so different. It was like a story each of them was telling, and I was just like, I got a story to tell too, and I'm mm. gonna it. Mm. That's what made me. And then, um, champagne in the room, and then maybe um, watch these clips, and I literally I was like, this is how it feels for me. I literally watched clip after clip after clip. Um, and I see these ladies tonight come off the balcony. I'm like, that's <laughs> what made me like, that's, uh, that's what made me, made me awesome. Who we got love? Well, Stasha. Stasha. <laughs> oh, so y'all say the old girl for that. <laughs> 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 Um, well, first of all, I want to say hey, hello, ladies. You all look beautiful. Um, Thank you. It's great to be able to sit here with a, a different generation, um, listening to their stories. Uh, well, for me, I started uh, going to balls around like 95, like, yeah, like 94, 95, during that era. Um, and uh, yeah, it, I didn't want to be a part of it at first. I thought, to me, it was just like, no, you know, and I got a post so many times about, you know, being a part of these different houses because I had so many different family members that were in different houses. They were Ebony's, they were Chanel's, oh. um, they were Escada's. So um, I was approached by a lot of them, you know, because I was around them and they wanted me to be a part, you know, but I was like, no, I don't want to be a part of ballroom. That's just not for me. I love Patrick, I love the glam, but the ball stuff is not for me. Um, it was one night. We were at the Nike Pavilion in Atlanta, Georgia, and I remember uh, Misha Milan came out. The I just remember the garage coming up, and my mom just came storming in, and I was like, "What is she doing?" 
like, no, she's not. Like, <laughs> it was like, no, she's not. <laughs> I was like, did this come up out? Like, we didn't even know she was here and she came up out like that. I was like, okay, that's what I need to be doing. And, you know, I think because I was always so intrigued about, you know, being in the spotlight, being on stage. And I thought that was that moment. And, like, she captivated me during that time. And actually, it was her and Raquel walked against each other that night. And they both, like, stormed. And it was just so amazing to see uh, beautiful Black trans women like on the floor, making the ballroom community excited to see them. Mm. You know, it was like they were worshiping them during that time. Um, it wasn't a lot of putting them to, to, against each other. It was more like worshiping them. They were beautiful creatures, they were beautiful women. Um, so that kind of captivated me and wanted me to be a part of ballroom. And I just remember I was outside of tracks, 306 Lucky Street, and the McGlares came up to me and it was like, you know, I think you should be a part of this house, blah, 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 blah. You've been in a ballroom. I'm like, no. And as I'm looking at them, you know, I love beautiful little butch queens, right? So I am <laughs> looking at all of them like, uh, okay. Well, maybe I should be a part of this. <laughs> like, maybe I should be a part of this. And um, that's how it happened. I became a, a Mugler. My very first house was uh, the Miyaki Mugler. Um, I was in the house actually for three years and I over our mother. So I was like a baby being an over our mother of a like big legendary house. So yeah. Oh, wow. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um it's, it's, it's crazy how similar like in some ways almost everybody's story is with kind of their introductions and how they mm -hmm. think somebody in the scene that captivated them and made them intrigued and made them say like yeah I need to be a part of this. Mm hmm I'm gonna actually toss a question to Kiana. Um, Kiana, what made you get into ballroom? Um, well, since I'm one of the shady pine girls, one of the older girls, <laughs> um, I to say, um, the, the mecca of ballroom, I started in 1993 at Mark Ballroom. Mm. Um, it gave ballroom to me because back then I didn't kind of know what that stuff was because I was so heavily into the church, you know, this and this and that, and then, you know, you couldn't do certain things. But um, right. it was my friend Tyrone who had, had introduced me and brought me to my first ball. I think it was a Chanel ball in 93. And to me, ballroom gave me a sense of, of love, a sense of belonging. And I was just mes mesmerized at looking at the people and the categories. And I said, I want to be a part of this. But then when I tried to do it, I wore Butch Queen drags. That was a mistake. I got chopped <laughs> across the board by Pepper LaBeza. <laughs> I, uh -uh, I got chopped by Pepper. She gave me the high up. But then after that, I kept pushing and pushing and pushing to, to see. It was a tough battle. And they gave me a tough go in the ballroom. And, and back in the and back in the early day, they didn't play. But what made you know what I what I'm thankful for what the ballroom gave me into me becoming who I am now and just watching the ballroom transpire over the years and what it has to become. It was then and now. All right. And that's a little bit. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Dante. Yes. All right. So our next question is, um, why did you lose your house? Um, and we can just go like the last one, whoever wants to like just kick it off and start it. And, um, and I would probably answer that. Why did you choose your house and what things do you look for in a house? Because I know we have some people out there watching who aren't probably familiar with ballroom. And I know a lot of times people that want to get into ballroom ask like, well, how do I know what house to choose in X, Y, and Z? So if y'all want to just share that with us, feel free. Well, I'll kick it off then. Um... Well, like I said, for me, you know, it was about it's a, it was it was about energy, but it was also about beautiful things that I felt like I wanted to be a part of. Um, and Mugler definitely stood out in the arenas for me to like gravitate to, to want to be a part of. And and during that time, uh, the, the Mugler's had only had one female figure in that house, and that was Raquel, and I was the second one to come in. So. Um, it was just a beautiful thing that it gravitated me to the house of Mugla because I felt like that's where I should fit in at. And I'm just, I, I'm, a, I'm a loyal person. So I go through the ups and the downs with people until the very, very end. Um, and, and then that's when I, you know, I fall out. But 
that was one of the reasons why I felt choosing the house of me, I can be clear, you know, it was energy, um, something that you fit in with. Like you just never should just go from house to me, house to house to house, because it's just, I don't know, for me, it's just kind of like, what are you looking for? Yeah. You're taking time out to try to figure out what you're looking for in ballroom. You can't just say, I want to be a part of this house because they offered you something. You can't say I'm gonna be a part of this house oh, because they offered me something. You have to be a part of something because it's in your heart. It's a mental thing, a physical thing. You see people there that you connect with, that you want to be a part of, that you want to get to know. Like those things are very, very important to me. So that's what I mean, like why I chose the house of me, I can move ahead during that time. And then what about the house of Garcon? Why did you choose the house of Garcon? Now, this is a very tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> um, the shade is thick. <laughs> um, I, uh, I felt like I chose the house of Miyaki Mugler because uh, they were still a part of Mugler. You mean Garcon? Um, I, Garcon. I mean, the house of Garcon, they were, they were still a part, they were uh, once a part of the house of Mugler. Um, we were family still, even through uh, the split, we were still family. We were still hanging out. We were still talk. We were still text with a lot of the members. I mean, so I felt like it was only right. Like, why go somewhere where you're really not sure if you're going to fit in or if you're going to be accepted? You should go somewhere where it's family. You know, you have a connection. You have a bond with people. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Next. Um, so I guess I'll go next. I think that my house chose me, my first. Um, so I didn't debut, but I do want to say that the house in the line was technically like the first house that I went to. Um, but I think that it goes into what I'm saying about you, because I love them, I love everybody there, but I don't think that they had a lot of female figures. So that was one of the reasons um, why I gravitated to Ms. Rahi, um, because of Barbie and Trigini, and I just felt um, like it was a better, um, fit for me, but I think with all the houses, I've only been in three. Um, it was Miss Rahi, Chanel, um, and now Margela. But I think that all the houses I try to be in, I try to, um, like I like when they're family oriented, you know? So it's not just us like being at the balls, but even us kind of doing things on side of it. I think that I like that aspect. Miss Rahi was very family oriented. I think that Chanel was the same way. Um, and I love what Benny is doing with Margela, because I think that he's doing the same thing and he has the same vibes. I think that that's important for a strong house for you guys to really bond and hang out like a real family, you know? Like, I enjoy that. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I'll go. So um, what made me choose t was was, um, I can say the main thing was they waited. Um, for the last probably four years now, I had every house show interest in me. And it, it made me very, um, very nervous because I, I, I didn't know what to do and where to go. And in 2017, um, Pam first came to me with a proposition. He said, we just started a house. We used to be Milan's and the Milan had just stuck out to me because of Stephanie and her being an inspiration of mine. And he explained to me about the house and he said, I want you to be the overall mother. So in 2017, you know, I had just, I was, I was still Miss Continental at that time. And my focus was on all of that. Like I was like, well, well, and I didn't, I didn't really put much, I put thought in it, but I was like, oh, I don't know. But he stayed persistent. And in those three, in three years, I watched them. I actually, I watched all of the houses. I started going to balls and just spectating and watching and observing the different houses and how they interact with each other and the mothers and things like that. I, I observed everything before I stepped into it. And what made me choose it was I would look at some houses and I would say, I don't see myself there. That that I, I don't, their aesthetic is not um, cohesive with with who I am as an individual on and off the stage. And I, it was very important for me to be in a house that was going to appreciate me when I'm dolled up and appreciate me when I'm not dolled up, appreciate me when I win, appreciate me when I lose, appreciate me just all around, appreciate me 
just as an individual and not just as this 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 image. That was very important to me because we know ballroom is a lot about the superficial. And I wanted people to get to know who I am. You know, the crazy me, the, if my hair sticking on top of my head, you still see, you still have that same admiration and, um, and, 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 and appreciation for me. And it was the fact that in three years of them coming to me, there's so many beautiful ladies that are in ballroom, so many that they could have chosen and put in that position to be overall mother, but instead they waited. And that in itself meant so much to me. And that was what made me, you know, make my decision ultimately. Oh, nice. Thank you. All right. Go ahead. Anybody else? <laughs> well, we, I've been in two houses. I spoke about the first house, the house of Khan. Um, which will always be my family. I think that's where a lot of people we don't talk about and we don't discuss is how sometimes you may leave your original family, but the love is still there. Um, we, the House of Con was, a, a lot of people don't know, they were more of an outside of ballroom family first. And to be a part of that, to see that on a different side, we do things like I was regular personal lives, we get intertwined with each other so much that ballroom was just the afterthought. So the bond was so deep, no matter if we in the same house or not, love is never lost. So when I left the house of Khan, not by choice, by voice, um, I became a 007 on the ballroom floor. And I stayed a 007 for years. And I was friends with, when I moved to Atlanta, I became friends with a lot of Balenciagas. And, but nobody ever questioned me. Nobody ever tried to come for me. When I became the 007, every house had the same opportunity to come get me. But the cons made them scared. <laughs> Let's keep it real and honest. They were scared to come and try to poach me to their house. And... But Balenciaga didn't because we had a friendship outside of ballroom. Um, we would help each other. We could be walking against each other in different houses. That's the type of individuals we are. We're going to help you get together. and We'll get you together. We'll get out there together. We'll go to the ball together and lead together. And I think a lot of people don't realize. Um, so Raquel sent Keith to call me. <laughs> Tell me she wanted a meeting with me. And I accepted and we went to we went we hung out all day. We talked. And I appreciate that talk that she offered me an invitation to come to the house of Valencia and I accepted it. Wow. And I, I I but I told her, I specifically told her I will come to the house of Valenciaga, but only one condition. I don't want a title, I don't want any responsibility. I just want to be a child. I just, I want to do ballroom differently. And she accepted that. And it was a time in my life where I lost somebody dear and special to me. And I literally wanted to die. And mm -hmm. I got the call from Bill and Siaka to say, be overall mother. It saved me. It saved me like no other. And because of that person, relationship within ballroom and minds, I knew that that's where I needed to be to keep going forward. And I do ballroom because of it. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that story. Yeah, I didn't know that last week. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I think we still have Lola and Asia. Yeah, so, okay, so then I'll go. Um, so um, what I can remember from my ballroom career is each house that I've been in um, was a stepping stone for me in my personal life and my personal growth. When my I'm, I'm in my first house, which was Atlantics, around the time that I was in school, and they recruited me 
and then I was in the house with Pony and Malachi, and um, they just saw the potential in me, and then that gave me the 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 push to want to keep on walking balls because I was going through personal stuff in my life, and the balls was a way for me to really express myself and be and be who I wanted to be because I really wanted to transition, but at the time it was hard for me to. So the blonde kind of um, put me on the map with the balls and then I started discovering many talents and many beautiful people. And so that kind of inspired me to just go for what I wanted. And so during that time, I think the blonde really helped me with that. Then I met other people like Veronica at the time who was in Milan. That is now a Mugler. She really helped me in my transition. And so I felt really close to her. So I, I became a Milan because of her. So I was close. And during that time, that's when that's when Stephanie Milan was the, the um overall house mother and I was just amazed by her. And at the time it was more like a Spanish house, so I kind of felt like included because you know, at the time being like kind of like fair skin in the ballroom scene was kind of like a little bit, um, I was overlooked, I would say a lot. And mm. um, I kind of felt like I had to fight for what I wanted to prove in ballroom. So, you know, as I started looking at the overall mothers and that, that not. I started realizing that, that I wanted to be an overall mother because they were praised in ballroom. And, you know, overall mothers and any mother is like, when they step into a room, it's like, oh my God, like everybody's like chanting and clapping. And, and I, always, I always wanted that feeling and how they felt it, I wanted that feeling. So I really dedicated my, my, my life to, this, to the ballroom, you know? Then I met Mike once, Mike, Mike. Um, Balenciaga, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he was, with, I think he was a Balenciaga at the time. He was uh, something else. He, he might have been an Aphrodite or something. Then he met me and then then I instantly um, connected with him. And then he told me to come to Balenciaga. And he was like, like the father figure in my life because I don't know my father. And he was always there to support me no matter what. Like when people didn't like um, what I would do for balls or like when I walk, he always had my back and I felt so much more connected to him. So then that's when I joined the house of Balenciaga. But in the back of my head, I still wanted to be a mother and I had to kind of work for that. So, you know, I became Balenciaga. I put my time in with them. And then I remember that Didi was the house mother at the time. And I wanted a mother title and I wasn't getting the mother uh, I wasn't getting a mother title and I remember that Mike decided to leave to go to Ms. Rahi. And I was kind of conflicting staying in the house with with obviously people that I love, but I was also brought in by Mike. So I was like in an uncomfortable position because he was offering me a position as Ms. Rahi as a mother and I wasn't really getting a mother position as Balenciaga. So that's that's the reason why I, in in a sense, you know, I'm not to like say anything bad about what Sasha says about you know moving houses to houses, but for me, it was more so about the connection that I have with people. You know what I'm saying? And that's then that's the reason why I left Balenciaga and I went to Israel. And then I've been Israel for a lot of years now, and you know, recently the house kind of broke up and. I created, um, well, I, I was part of the founding um, members of the House of Gorgeous Gucci, and then I, they decided to make me overall mother, and then that's how I became the legendary mother of all Gucci. <laughs> Fine. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all for being so vulnerable too with y'all sharing us. Yes. Of us. Um, I'm paying attention to the comments. They are loving all of y'all right now. Like, all of y'all. Yes. Asia. Um, it's a lot of a long overdue because it's so much divide amongst the ladies. 
And for us all to get together and be together on one accord, it's just an amazing thing. Yeah. We need to Absolutely. do this more often. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Go ahead. Yes, we do. Um, so the first house I was in was the house of learning. Um, I, the girls I used to hang with, um, that's the house they were in, and those were my friends. So I just kind of, we all went and just got in. We never really got voted in. We just went in. And um, I stayed there about like until it closed. It was like at least like three weeks. Four weeks. Um, but um, during my time in that house, I was at the um, school um, when it was a column. And I was standing next to this house. Like, like when I looked at them, it was like Hollywood. It was just like, it was this glitz, glam, beauty. It was just, a, it was such a like, uh, and this is like, they just both this community that I was just like, this is what I'm just like. That's where I want to um, And that for me, I just waited. I had to wait a whole year to be um, invited into the house. And um, yeah, and I parted ways, um, you know, I, I parted ways, whatever. And um, I just decided I wanted something different. Um, I wanted to be a part of a house that was proper. That was gonna like push me, and that was more of a, more of a situation where it was like, I felt connected family wise, and just uh, a vibe, but energy that you can't really find other places. And I just wanted to be a part of that this time. So my conversation with James um, King James, it was like his vision was my vision. It was just like a connection. It was like a plug. It was an outlet. It was like that. That's that's me. Like that's where I need to be. And yeah, that's what got me to life. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Congrats again to everybody up here. Um, Kiana, did you want to share a little bit or? Um, no, that's okay because we're gonna be here all night. Man. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because you that probably is the wrong question for you, Kiana. So. Uh <laughs> <laughs> get him, Kiana. Get him. No, I had to get you. <laughs> but I think you actually are asking the next question. No, Dante, Dante, you got the next. Um, yeah, Dante, you got the next question. Okay. Um, so this is a more lighthearted question. Question. Oh, wait. So before I go to that, can y'all do me one favor and put your devices on silent? On mute. And, yeah. And also, when you're not speaking, just mute. Um, self mute yourself because I'm getting a few texts that like. I think like y'all were saying earlier, some like crickety like stuff with the audio. So just if you're not speaking, just mute your um mic and unmute when you want to speak. Um, so this is a more like light um lighthearted fun question. Um, and that is if you weren't walking the category that you're walking or the categories because a lot of you up here walk multiple categories over your ballroom career. Um, so I'll reframe it. So what is one category that you haven't walked yet that you like to walk? I would say one way. Wrong way. I think me and Stasha can say we bought them all. <laughs> <laughs> we walked categories that we didn't even think we would ever be able to walk. We got <laughs> shot. <laughs> Girl. But Lisa out there did it. Girl, <laughs> Girl. Girl. <laughs> I think for me, um, I've only walked one category um, so far, but I want to. I want to try it all. Honestly, I, I literally want to try it all. I'm a kind of person I like to push myself, so you might see me out there <laughs> walking, bogging. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm going to try it though. Just have some Epsom salt. <laughs> I would definitely, I think I would definitely walk labels. Like, that's one of the categories. Like, labels is like, it's just like energy. It's just everything to me. And it's just like, you come and step through, done to the nine yards. It's just so, so bad. Yeah, I'm with you, Lola. I want to be current. Like, like I want to be current. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Shout out to Simone. I know she's watching as well. Um, so many people I want to shout out that's like hitting us up and commenting. Like, this is a very active yeah, audience. This, this we have. probably the most active that I've ever seen the comments. Yeah. Channels. Yeah. Like, I, see, I keep yeah, on looking because I'm looking at two devices, trying to keep up with all the comments. Can I say something? I um I think everybody has this name on that list. It's not a category that I want to walk. It's who I would like to walk against. Mm. It's just to be in oh. their presence. It's Stephanie, Stephanie, Stephanie. Yes. I don't want to beat her. I don't want to be in front of her. I don't want to be behind her. I want to stand beside her. Done. It's the last thing on my ballroom list. She's still <laughs> her. Yeah, well, um, I wanted to walk. Um, I wanted to walk Fem Queen performance in mug. I want to talk <laughs> performance in mug because I do have a um, Shannon. You better watch out for that duck because my cat walks something nasty. <laughs> you don't need some big game when you finish. <laughs> oh, did everybody answer? Yeah, we got everybody. everybody answer. All right, Kiana, you actually have the next question. Well, ladies, um, this question goes out to any of the ladies who want to answer. Um, we know the ballroom scene is a formation of we know today was built by trans women. Do you feel that trans women get the respect you think they deserve overall in the scene? This can go out to any one of you ladies, but. Well, I'll go ahead and start that off. Yes. Okay. I'll go ahead and I'll start it out. Um, I say it all the time. I, I speak this a lot. Um, um, ballroom started from transgender women. It started from the, the pageant community. Um, mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think that our male figures came in and they slightly trying to take it over, like take it from us. And do I think we get the respect that we deserve? No. And the reason why I say that is because it's been, I know for me personally, just being in ballroom for so many years and, and, and always walking, I was always the one that everybody wanted to put somebody up against. And it be, and it started to become like problematic for me. Um, and, and being one individual person and constantly having different people coming after you um, or now they're putting you up against this person, putting you up against that person. And it turned mm -hmm. in so much into so much negativity and so much drama for me. Uh, I just didn't like it. Um, and that's what separated me uh, away from ballroom and it pulled me away from the scene because I just felt like that was something that I couldn't handle no more. I couldn't deal with that anymore. So it was the respect that I was losing um, for the scene. And I felt like the, the scene was losing respect for me because it was just too much negative energy, and too much drama for me. So when it comes to respect and the trans women getting the respect that we deserve, I don't think we do. Right. Um. So I'll jump in to be honest. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Yeah, go for it. Um, go ahead. So I think that it's a delicate topic. Um, I say that the scene is filled with love and all of those things, but I think that respect, like I think sometimes we need to think about what exactly respect is. Um, and I say that to say, and I know um, that my sisters will help and will agree, but it's like, you know, you can't, kind of hold my hand and call me pretty or treat me like a mother when it's time to walk a ball. I mean, it's not saying that I deal with it personally, but I know you'll understand what I mean. Like you have to respect my lifestyle. You you have to respect me as a person. Um, I think being a face girl, I think that when you're pretty, people treat you a certain way, but it's almost as if you can't disrespect the trans woman in my presence and then be like, no, not you. Do you understand what I mean? Because, mm -hmm. because I feel like you think that about all of us and you may not say that, but that is exactly what it implies. It's like um, someone making a racial statement and then being like, uh, uh but not you. I'm not talking about you. Like, yes, you are, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's what I, um, it's delicate. I think that that's what I wish that some of the male figures would take into account. You know, we are women. Um, and it's more than just holding our hand and getting life and 
playing Barbie and Ken. It is to respect us for who we are as people and to stand by us. And I mean, it just gets really, really deep. But I, I like, and I do want to say that I think that there are many male figures in this room who do great jobs, um, who do cherish us, who do protect us, who do treat us in the way that we should be treated. But I will say that sometimes I notice that when people get angry or when there's a disagreement, you go from being such a magnificent person to disrespectful things. You understand what I'm saying? So once you're not mad and we come back from that, like I still remember what you said and I still remember the disrespect. So I think that that's what matters because it's more than buying me a drink or calling me pretty or, you know what I mean? Treating us like the women, you need to truly respect us. Thank you. Um, yes. And everybody, and, and that's the crazy part. I'm sorry, I wanted to chime in, but that's the crazy part because like you hear that so much when you have so many male figures that like to, to disrespect trans women. And, and the first thing they say, oh, not you. It's like, you just excluded me because I'm in your presence. But if I make you mad or I do something to hurt your feelings or hurt you or whatever, then I'm going to be the exact same thing that you were calling this other person that you did in my presence. So if mm -hmm. I don't stop you and, and correct you at that moment, then it's like I'm not doing my job as a trans woman. I'm not doing my job as a mother figure in the community. And I think that's very important, but it's something that we, we deal with on a, a daily basis. But yes, yeah, shout out to all the great fathers and friends and family members that do protect the trans women and love them and respect them to the utmost. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, um, ladies, I think today is a different time. And chivalry is dead when it comes to respecting and honoring um, our women of trans experience and uh, trans women in the scene. Lang I see some of the language that's being played on online as well as other things it's kind of like it's really a, a touchy subject but respect is given when given when you know respect is given when given and we should all respect each other yeah i'm a little tongue-tied right now but it's such a uh, touchy subject to me but that's you know how i feel about certain things and aspects of things are you know Thank you for that. Anybody uh, else in the comment? Yeah. I, Go ahead. Let's get a different point of view. Um, I think that there's a lot of a lack of respect all the way around. Um, mm -hmm. I think that everybody, we're, we're in this world where everybody wants to be able to say who they are, but when people want to be addressed, viewed, in a certain way, not in line with what they want, it's disrespect all the way around. Mm. And for me, I'm only gonna speak for me. And and that's so many other people that speaks the same language that I speak. Mm. That as a cisgendered woman, right. I can never put myself anyway anything before or after I'm a black woman, period. Whatever anybody else categorize themselves, that is fine with me, do that. As that woman that I am, I can champion for your rights. I can be the ally for your rights. I can go out there and help you move mountains in other ways that you didn't think that I could help you. But also too, don't shun me for who I am. Mm. And we have a lot of that. Um, I think, and also too, by saying that, I think it's a lot of people who are not prideful of who they are. So when they see other people who are, it intimidates them. Mm. Some people have learned who they are, born who they are, know who they are at a very young age, and it scares people. Nothing that you can say can change that. Nothing that you can do can change that. I'm personally, I'm not here to change anybody's opinion. I can mm -hmm. care less. My light will always shine brighter than yours. So if you can't, can't un accept that or figure that out, sweetie, I ain't got nothing to tell you. You can get on. Mm -hmm. I'm a bows right on through you. <laughs> 
And it might come off very harsh and people can't understand that, but I've lived in the reality. I've lived in the real world for almost 40 years. It has worked for me for 40 years. <laughs> um, and I have moved through rooms and circles that people can never imagine that I can be able to survive through. Take a walk with me, I can show you some things. Um, and I know that so many others have too. And we all just have to, if we can all just come together on one page and respect everybody for who they are, it would be such a beautiful thing. Yeah. yeah. I, think I wish y'all could see all the comments that's coming in. Um, it's really good. Um, I, I just can't get them all on the screen at the same time. Um, anybody else want to chime in on that? One? I'm really, th th this question is very loaded. It's a lot to unpack. Um, and I think one of the things, one of the reasons why the respect isn't there is because, um, everything is saturated. Trans women are no longer a novelty. There was a point in time where there weren't as many trans women. So when you did, when you were, um, in the presence of one, you were enamored by, by individual people worship worshiped us and, and celebrated us because we were we were so few and far in between and i think now it's it's so saturated you know and, and, and individuals are so uh individuals it's very easy for individuals to transition with the drop of a dime some people and I believe some people do it for the wrong reason. And you have so many of us now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it being a lot of us, but I feel like because it's so saturated that there's not, people don't really see anything special about it anymore. And so it's just like, it becomes like, oh, this is, that's the next girl. Oh, that's, that's another girl. And then a lot of us go for the same look and, and so no one, not, not many people stand out and have their own image. And and so people just became, I think people, the, the fun of the, the fem queen categories and things like that, I, be, I believe it just, it wasn't fun for people anymore. So they began to focus on other categories that, that, that um, cater to the male image or uh, masculine presenting individuals. And we kind of were pushed back to the side and it's kind of like okay well we'll do a little fem queen category here or there um i think now and i think now that trans women are in the forefront you, you see us in congress you see us in television you see us uh with these different positions i i, I think now we're we're coming back to a, a place where people know why we're respected, why we should be respected, and and they they see our importance now. So I think we're we're going back in a, a different direction of of getting that 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 um that novelty moment back. Um, and and I, I have to agree with Shannon as well. You know, when respect is all the way around. You know, us as as trans women, as as fem queens. We have our moments too when we could where we're feeling ourselves and we can be disrespectful or we can or we can sometimes not respect gay men or not or or, or not see their importance sometimes or some of us oh it's just that oh that's just next between oh child go go get me this or go get me that instead of asking that person hey how are you how are you are 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 you are you uh, protecting yourself? Are you having protected sex? Are you all prep? Like we just look at them as oh, child, just this next butch queen. So we have to, the same respect that we want, and that and that same admiration that we want from from gay men. We need to, as mothers, we need to start giving that same energy. So I, I feel like it's a give and take situation. Um, oh, I would definitely agree with Jadelle. Um Go ahead, Sasha, go ahead. Okay, so I would, okay, so I would say I definitely agree with Giselle. I feel like, you know, respect is given when it's earned. So, you know, you have to treat your, your, the people that you're around just as much as you want to be treated. And it goes for friend queens, 
butch queens, lesbians, anybody in the scene. You know, like, I feel like, you know, everyone is their own person and respect is, is, is how you carry yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so if you carry yourself with nothing but drama, drama around you and negativity, then you're, you're not going to always want to respect your other people, you know? And I definitely agree with, with what you does. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't always have to be, um, like butch queens, like disrespecting the girls. It can also be the girls disrespecting the butch queens. And it's just like the relationship they have outside of the scene that comes into the scene. And it's just like this view and the image of disrespect in front of other people. And then just think that it's okay for them to talk like that because they just pick up on it. Because some people don't even know like how to act around certain people. So they just pick up on other people's like personalities and, and it just becomes like the same, like where you feel like you can talk the way you want to talk to people and it doesn't, it shouldn't be like that. So definitely respect your brother, your sister, the person that's next to you and then you'll get, you'll get the same in return. Thank you. As Kylie said, Kylie said, humans deserve to be treated as humans respect. Um, Asia, I know you was about to say Period. something too. Um, for me, um, it's straight up just to I'm very much. So, um, we really don't get our roles until we die um, at all. Um, and it's sad to say that, but it's the truth. I get that, you know, certain things are just respect, you know, like you gotta earn it now. Like, you gotta respect everyone deserves respect. No matter who it is, a dog, a cat, everyone, you know, you should, you should give, give them respect. It's like, I gave I gave you some genuine love, now it's, you know, when you mess up, it's over. But I think we all deserve respect in the beginning. And I think a lot of times, um, once we start speaking about the same things of, oh, well, I'm not going to say that anymore because I got to go to the Or I'm not going to... I'm, I'm not going to do it this way. I want to do it my way. Or I think we should start to do things this way. I want to. I want to help too. I don't want to just look nice and you know, like and shut up and be quiet. So I want to speak now. I have goals that I want to do in the team. And that's when for me, it's it's like once we started speaking up and saying things, we got that'd be very like, disrespectful. That'd be like, no, you should be quiet. Uh, we believe that you know it did it did get out of hand that we got tired of it and some girls just bullied with the shit. So now I really don't give a fuck. I want I want to fight everybody. Excuse my language. I'm sorry about that. But um, you're fine. We, we're not sensitive. You good? Like, yes. About that as a, of what I see, really, I take a look at everyone's story. I don't just look at mm -hmm. story, I look at everyone's story. So I see how the disrespect changes for different people, and it's like no. That's not cool for me. And it's just like those girls started to look nice now. And it's like, now nah, I'm shitting on my little spectrum at all because I'm not so mm -hmm. You was disrespecting me or shading me. But now that I'm, you know, a girl look nice now, it's like, handing me roses and stuff. Mm -hmm. right. I definitely agree with the ladies, Don Dante. Um, I just think that self-respect comes first before anything. And we definitely need to respect each other across the board. That's it. Yeah. I think Sasha was about to say something. But, uh... I mean, no, I was, I was going to say, like, I, 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 honestly, I do think that, you know, you have to respect each other. Um, I think that's very, very important. Um, for, for me being around, uh, like, 20 plus, um, 20 plus years, and having so many kids from across the across the map, um, I've always taught them to respect women, respect trans women. So if you know any of my kids, my sons, you know that they are up on the girls, they're in their faces, they're smiling, they're holding their hands, um, they give them the utmost respect. It's because of what I taught them. Um, and I know for a fact that I've taught mine a very, very powerful thing in life, and that's how to respect others. Um, everyone deserves that respect, no matter who you are and what you are. I agree. Huh? Yeah, so I think I agree. You do have a lot of kids. Oh. <laughs> 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 Baby mama. 
All of my girls are crazy, just like me. <laughs> That's why she's laughing. You see, oh, she's admitting that she's crazy. Oh. <laughs> oh, pretty boots. <laughs> I'm glad it's not me. <laughs> Thank you all. Uh <laughs> you holding my hand. What do you mean? <laughs> you just holding my hand. I've told you that a thousand times. Like, my food is crazy. Okay. Thank you all for that. And I hope that um, the male figures in the scene that are out here just watching. Um, we listen, we take that in, we learn, and you know, we all can learn from each other, listening to y'all and everything else. Um, and to wrap it up, I think what we said is, I think as a whole in the scene, we just have to do a better job of respecting each other. Um, mm -hmm. No matter who we are, like I think Callie said, humans are humans. And I think if we break it down to all of us looking at each other as human beings and saying, is this how I wanna, would wanna be treated? Or, you know, I want somebody to treat me this way and we move from there, then we'll be in a better place. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you're, if you're just joining us, um, this is the Mother's Day panel, a special edition. Please share, please share. If you are watching it and you want to comment, go to the Cap Capital Barroom Council's Facebook page. That way I can funnel it up here. Um, I'm getting a lot of comments on some of the other pages, but I can't put it up here for everyone. So if you want, or, or visit us on Capital Ballroom Council on YouTube, and you can comment so your comments can pop up on the screen. Um, yeah. But you um, know what I want to say too. I want I yeah. want to say um, just be like for me being in ballroom since the <laughs> since the nineties. <laughs> uh, it's just funny when I say that because a lot of people don't know my age because I'm like really twenty five. But um, right. you know, it's just it's, it's it, it amazes me that our women don't stick together like we should. And I think mm. that if we if we get out of, out of our minds and out of our heads of thinking um, one is against you or one is um, jealous of you, I think personally we would be a strong force to, to deal with. Um, and I think that's how we can take over our scene and get it back. You know what I'm saying? Because it's really Get a ghetto women's board. That, that, that's what we need. We need a women's board where we get together and we make things happen. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, and it shouldn't be about who looks better, who dress better. It shouldn't be about any of that. It should be about us coming together, going through these different things and like create beautiful uh, individuals and, and these beautiful stories that we can all relate in some way, some some shape uh, or, or fashion. We can all relate uh, to something. But if we can start getting together and doing things as a whole, I think that's that's something that's going to start like taking us in a different direction. And that's what we need. We need growth. We need um, strong women. We need women that's going to take control. We need women that's going to actually tell the fathers, we got it. We can yeah. do it. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree too. I think we definitely need um, we need competency um, classes with other because one thing we need to realize is that um, even though we all fall or identify under the the umbrella of trans we're all different and all and, and there's no cookie cutter uh, image of what a trans woman should be because we come in all shapes and, and sizes and even with that being said we also need to have a cultural competency uh, class with the bridge queens so that they can understand us and our life and what we go through. um and, and better understand i think they'll have a better appreciation and understanding of us if we really break down and let them know we're all different some like this some like this some like we're not all the same and i think that's that's one of the things that the misconceptions is they think that we're all the same. We all like the same things. We all want to look the same, and that's not the truth. So, if we could, as a community, if we could really get together and learn each other a little more, then we'll be able to move a little higher, you know, in the mm. program. Would I say this? I think they do now. I think they do now. It's no different than racism. It's conquer and divide. Mm -hmm. mm. I agree. Don't don't ever think that they don't know. They know. That's that's the one thing I've always said why men still love the United States of America. Because men play stupid. Yeah. And women sit up there and think that men are stupid. 
when sweetie it's all a game to they play it better than a woman <laughs> I did, Dante, i'm sorry but wait a minute did she say this was a, a trans panel uh, i think i'm on the wrong one baby what you, what you did <laughs> <laughs> this is a Mother's Day panel. It's a no, Mother's Day panel. Okay, we should start texting. We should start texting. Because I think I put all of the ball gowns and the wigs oh, um, and the makeup and all the furs that we bring to entertainment. Gosh, I can't you know what I'm saying? Like, we need to start doing that. Yes. Yeah. But, Sasha, the scene ain't going nowhere. I don't think the scene has gone anywhere. I just think, it, you know, we just need to evolve more as women. As leaders, because as leaders, there's so much divide and so much division amongst the girls. Of this one, I'm like, this one did this, this one got caught up, this one ain't. It's always a divide, and I don't even like to use the terminology between I just lose men's um, uh, the men in this men period, just yeah. like you know, we girl, we ain't going nowhere, we all right. And like I remember, I remember one time. This was like some years, like a long time ago. I had like a little crab ball at my house, and I had invited all the girls over. And when I tell you, we had a good time. Okay, and I mean, we had a good time. It was me. It was uh, Tempris. It was Maya. It was uh, Tiffany. I mean, it was a lot of us there. Like we had a really good time. And Maya's supposed to have been doing it again, but she hasn't done it yet. And don't do that. Don't do that. Every time I saw her for about three years straight, I told her about that seafood ball. And she knows I'm not lying. How memorable it was. We really, really connected that day, girl. And I love you. And you cook crab legs better than me. So you got to. <laughs> Dasha, what about the people who can't eat oh, seafood? I'm coming to eat them crab legs. Well, if you can't eat seafood, then what? what I mean, if, if we do something like that again, and I, I don't mind. Like, I, I don't mind um, having a girl and having a good time and just keep in and laughing oh, yeah. ourselves. But um we would definitely, you know, provide things that others will eat. If you don't eat seafood, you know what I'm saying? Like we'll get somebody to cook you some chicken because I don't eat chicken. Um <laughs> I told her she was pregnant. I told her she pregnant. That's why she falling out, y'all look. That's why she falling out. Girl, you're gonna have to follow up with that chicken. <laughs> Um, Tempers made a good point. She said that the scene basically mirrors the world and when it comes to misogyny. And I think that, you know, one thing us as gay men have to realize is that even though we're gay, we still can be misogynistic too. Um, I know at times I have to check myself with that too. So I think it's important for us to remember that just because we are gay men doesn't mean we can't be misogynistic. Henry, you want to bring up the... Oh, hold on. I'm saying someone is offered to be the chef for the um, gathering for y'all. Uh, oh, Trey oh, Haney. Yes, my granddaddy. Yes, my granddaddy. Oh, to make that put up on the screen, that it was sad. The ice cream shot there. Snap that and send it to Brooklyn. Chef. It's you said. Giselle, chef, 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 chef. Who? All right, all right. So the next question is Kiana's again. Ladies, um, what has been your happiest moment being a house mother? Anybody can answer, so you know. Well, yes. I'm gonna start off that. Me, um, oh, right, right. my happiest moment being a house mother is just being around my kids when we're not at balls because that's when you really get to like, you know, connect with them and on a different level. And like when we have retreats, like I think those were, those are the happiest moment that I have with my kids. When I can be around them and we can actually discuss about regular stuff and not always about balls and, you know, making sure that they're okay in their lives and, you know, having a good meal. I think those for me are the happiest moments. That's so beautiful. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> anybody? <laughs> Text me. Anybody want to take it or should I just go? Oh, Shannon will speak. One of my kids just texted my most happiest moments is being drowned at Perosa Pool (laughs) 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 by one of my kids. (laughs) But for real, I think my happiest moment being a mother is 
you grow into it. I think that, and I try to tell a lot of people that it's not what you think it is. And you might not want the title and the responsibility until you are complete with your journey in ballroom because you are so much more fulfilled in that position when you can step out of the limelight and allow somebody else to shine and to know that that light will never dim yours. Mm -hmm. And that's the most fulfilling part about being a mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it, funny you, you say know, that I, I haven't been a mother um, that long, but that was kind of what I wanted to reference. Um, I think my proudest moment so far is seeing my house on Legendary. Um, mm -hmm. When when I when I won the ball MLK weekend, um, as soon as they gave me my prize, I said, "Here, give this to them for the show," because I already knew that they were going to be on the show, and they were, you know, Pampers and all that. I was like, oh, wow, you know, like I'm like, is that in my head? I'm thinking, is that not what people do is that not what mothers do they do they not support their people mm -hmm. or do they just say oh yeah i'm the overall mother no if you're going somewhere to compete i'm going to support you not just saying oh yes yeah, she does but i'm gonna support you financially as well because that's what that's what needs to be done so seeing them on the television i got to binge watch it um yesterday mm -hmm seeing all of them and you know and seeing simone and it's and really simone because i i knew simone longer um i i knew her before she transitioned and seeing mm -hmm. her transition and how beautiful you know of a person she is becoming how talented she is you know i was beaming just really beaming watching them on that tv and seeing them execute the way that they did so that's my proudest moment so far well, should I should I go? Go for it. Well, a little different and personal for me, like um, seeing my children elevate and succeed on and beyond um, the ballroom floor. It's an, it's it's an, it's a wonderful thing to me. Watching my legacy continue through um, my children, um, that's my greatest pride and joy. Like what I've instilled in them, they are just leading. To leading and, and, and the legacy is just continuing proud on and beyond to see what my my kids are doing and that's my greatest uh, I'm gonna say point um, it will have to be a look in your eyes when you know that I'm proud of them. Right. Um that to me is so mm -hmm. so it's such a connection of our hearts at that moment and it's something I think in me forever. It makes me, it pushes me and it makes me weak, like go hard for them, like in every single way. Like just in the eye one action makes them happy and proud of me. So. We, yo, we love Asia, okay? We absolutely do love her. Yeah. So we proud of her. her. I love Asia, that's my Leo sister. <laughs> My niece, we, we, we very well, and I would like to also add my most proudest moment as well is um, my daughter Kiana become my daughter at the House of Olympia. I was like, okay, I just love it. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's shoot over to the next question. Do you want the next question or you want to do the um, community spotlight? He's here. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can go into the community spotlight. Give these ladies a, a break. We've been here for like almost an hour and a half now. Give them a break real quick do our community spotlight and then bring them back. All right, ladies. So hang on for a little bit. We're going to chat with some of the other um, community What's spotlight up? person. Go ahead. Don't leave. I'm just going to drop you all down back. Okay. Well, quick, quick before. Um, Wait. So how long do we have? I um I I I do have to leave out about ten o'clock because you know I have to work. Oh no. We okay. Gonna be, yeah. Gonna oh yeah. We're gonna be done by ten. Yeah. This is actually quick. This is really fast. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is let's, maybe about five minutes or so. So just hang out. Um, and you'll see everybody in a minute. Okay. All right. So, Dante. <laughs> so, uh, no, I was telling Kiana. Oh. Um, so, this is going well. Yeah, I'm, I'm really yeah. enjoying the panel. I'm loving the energy. I'm loving the transparency, the the answers, and just like the rawness of everything. I'm, yes. I'm loving it. Um, loving the motherly energy is it's, it's very that. It's it's really good. Um, the part that we're at right now is our community spotlight. Um, our community spotlight is we try to highlight a well, not try. We highlight a business owner within the ballroom scene who is in the DMV um, region to help them to one get their business out there more also to kind of congratulate them and show them um that we're here for them we love them and acknowledge that we see them out here doing their thing and supporting um entrepreneurs within the scene um our guest today um is black live Ben, um and he'll be telling us about his catering business okay yep wait a minute uh oh community wait. spotlight Welcome. Hey guys, how y'all doing? Yeah, yeah. Good. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so nervous. <laughs> um, I am. <laughs> All right, so from the ballroom scene to see me in this this at the um this this uh mode right here is pretty different. Um but I do want to thank uh, the ballroom community, Dante, um, uh, for inviting me to be a part of this wonderful platform um, to be able to have the, uh, the, the, the attentions of ballroom participants uh, for five to ten minutes is awesome. Um, <clears throat> just to tell you a little bit about Kim Kitchen, um, the pandemic kind of uh, made all of us kind of find out hustle. Um, I got laid off from my job uh, as a GM and I, I kind of was struggling to figure out what would be my next uh, venture. Um, cooking has always been my passion. Uh, my grandmother, Sadie Mae Robinson, um, God bless her soul, um, I stole me with the tools to be able to move around in the kitchen and to actually create recipes, et cetera, and to show love through taste. Um, I got that from her. So uh, 2019, October, after being laid off from my job uh, back in March, I decided to go full force into my passion that was cooking. Um, I did the LLC for Kenham Kitchen and it took off like a rocket. Um, we initially started here in my kitchen uh, doing dinners, um, uh, which actually turned into me doing catering as well. Um, the ballroom participants, uh, friends and family of mine have been very, very supportive of uh, my business and um, I couldn't be so, so appreciative. Um, Throughout this whole ordeal, um, I got an opportunity to uh, uh, pitch my my brand, pitch my uh, some of my menu selections to uh, the Lexington Market here in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, for you, some of you that may not know, that's actually 400 West Lexington Street, downtown Baltimore. Um, right now, we are going under a 40 million dollar renovation at the uh, the new Lexington Market. So, to be one of the participants that actually got chosen that uh, got selected my business proposal and everything kind of wowed them i was super excited yet kind of still shocked in the moment humbly that couldn't believe that i actually excelled and uh, wowed them etc so that opportunity was just um phenomenal and um uh i got through all the interviews etc um and now we are waiting for the grand opening that is expected to happen march 2022 Let's put that on your calendars this March 2022, and that is downtown Lexington Market. Um, just to give you a little bit more about Kenneth Kitchen and what we actually stand for, we are about the people. Um, I was uh, one of the, uh, uh, a young man that came from the 80s where my parents was on drugs, et cetera. So I kind of was thrown out in, the, uh, in that industry of kind of like, okay, your parents is here, what you gonna do? My grandmother came and got me and she nurtured me with love. Um, that's where my South, uh, South um, Southern roots come from. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, a native, um, I was, but I was raised in South Carolina. Um, and that's where the cooking and stuff came from, the passion and, and cooking and everything. But again, Kenneth Kitchen is focusing on saving people, um, uh, again, through hunger, 
of giving financial assistance, resources to the community, um, uh, food assistance, uh, scholarships for school program, mentorship. That's our uh, goal, uh, long-term goal for here at Kenneth Kitchen. Uh, within 2022, we're ex uh, expanding to launch uh, the Kenneth Kitchen Foundation. Um, mm -hmm. And that actually will focus on uh, the minority communities, um, the L L LGBTQ um, communities as well, because a lot of us come up in the communities lost, don't know where to go, don't have a, a pillow to stay on, uh, to sleep on, don't know where your next meal is coming from, et cetera. And then some of us do grow up with the passions, et cetera, but just don't have the direction or the tools or the connections to put us in the proper places doing the proper things. So again, Kenneth Kitchen is just not only about food, it's about giving opportunities to young individuals that need those. And that's again, LGBTQ, um, uh, minorities, Spanish, black, white, Chinese, whatever you are, and you need that that platform or that, that um, that um what the word i'm looking for you need that guidance Kenneth kitchen will be one of those places um that you can actually uh count on um right now we have um a, a few partnerships that we are uh working with one of my main business partner is um baltimore seafood that's located down in canton um canton um area of here baltimore actually it's 2324 boston street again the name is baltimore seafood they are lovely with the seafood broils um, seafood, crab cakes, and all that other stuff. So um, that's one of my business partners that actually um, that's on board with us. We also partnership with the Boys and Girls Club. Um, uh, again, we got a lot of youth here in Baltimore that needs that guidance, that 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 meal, that hot meal. Someone to show that they love. Um, also, we're partnership with um, Bar uh, Be More Babies. It's it's focusing on. Um, Females that's uh, single, single, single family females that actually got kids and stuff. They kind of need help and direction of uh, again financial assistance, maybe uh, vouchers for food, etc. But again, this is a partnership that we are also um, taking part of. And and last but not least, um, I'm sure you guys seen the XL Care here recently. Um, we also partner with the Daily Bread here in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. uh, feed the homeless. Um, and we try to do that at least once a month here. So it wasn't just the XL Care that we decided to do it. We already was doing it, but the partnership with XL Care was a phenomenal um, um, a way to, again, to put us out there. And I know I'm talking, I'm gibbering, I'm just saying never, but I'm just excited for this opportunity. We don't get too many uh, uh, moments where um, we put each other on a pedestal and just to uh, bring us into the forefront because um, if anybody know me, I've been in barroom for a while. Um, let's talk about ballroom for a minute. I just, I've been in ballroom for a while, initially, Khan, Karan, Ebony, I uh, found my niche with the house of um, Khan for five years. I left Khan and then I came here to the house of love then where I'm so happy, loving the moments, etc. But yeah, ballroom is ballroom. This is who I am. I love cooking. I love helping. Um, I'm not the person that certain people may think I am. However, I am a man of principles, integrity, morals, and standards. Um, so, in a nutshell, this is Kenneth Kitchen, and I do appreciate <laughs> this opportunity for just being on here. Again, I'm nervous. I don't like public speaking, et cetera, but um, I'm sure you guys know that my heart is in the right place, that, that I'm passionate about what I do, um, and I'm 100% for my people. The community, etc. So, any stipulation that you may have heard about black, please take that, wipe that out. Here I am displaying myself to ten thousand plus people to let you guys know that I am more than what you may heard or what you may see. Now, last but not least, I do want to invite everyone to um, uh, on June sixth, we are having the Baltimore Kickball Volleyball um, Annual thing here in Baltimore. Um, last year, Kenneth Kitchen sponsored it, um, a kickoff. So this year, we're a partner with um, some D.C. Um, uh, natives as well as Baltimore natives. And we kind of going to bring everybody together and we're going to have a ball, uh, Baltimore kick, kickball and volleyball tournament. Um, so, again, I'm excited. Thanks for this opportunity, guys. And that is Kenya, Kiana, and Dante. Make sure I got the names correct. Um, I appreciate you guys again. Humbly appreciate this opportunity because 
it's, it's the business is taking off. And just with this this opportunity right here, I'm sure I will get more love um, from um, the people in the community. And Rodney, I just, see, I just Rodney, Bob, man, I just seen that you say you love me. I appreciate your support in and out of my inbox. My spell check, Captain, because you have been <laughs> only the better. I appreciate those. It'd be the small things like that, just to show me that you guys are watching, you guys are rooting for me, and that goes a long way. And I thank you. Well, Kim, we love you. We love you. You're doing a wonderful thing. And um, I speak your name. Keep doing what you do. I'm so happy and proud of you. You're doing yeah. it. You are doing thank it. You. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations on all that you've accomplished so far. And I don't think that anybody watching this will ever think that you're not a public speaker at this point because um, we didn't even have to ask you any questions. Not one. I was thinking my question was like, oh, okay, well. I mean, I know we said we had a time that we did this segment usually is. But, you know, oh, you had your notes. We I got to know. rush you though. Um, but, I mean, let, let me just say this, Dante. Um, I, I sent him earlier. I said, Dante, I don't know why I'm so nervous, etc. He said, Why is me? And I always, I told him, I said, Well, I, I always told him, if you're not nervous, that means you're not ready. And that just lets you know the, the anticipation that I have had for this when he initially said to me until this morning when I read the email, etc. I'm, I'm appreciative of this opportunity. This opportunity don't don't happen every night. So again, guys, thank y'all for this platform. Absolutely, yeah, of course, absolutely. Of course, of course. Kenneth, how can the people find you? I have. Well, you're gonna put your um so my uh, social media handles um Kenneth Kitchen LLC on Facebook um Ken Kitchen K E N K I T C H E two N's on Instagram. Also, if you want to find out more uh what's going on with Lexington Market, it's actually Lex uh, Lexington underscore market. So you can find out all the information there. Um, again, follow me on my business page. We continue to actually um, do cooking while we're waiting on the um, the, the, the uh, construction to finish for Lexington Market. Um, we always post a menu maybe every other week. So again, if you haven't yet came to Kenneth Kitchen here at the uh, the initial house part, um, don't don't worry. You'll have the opportunity to meet us down at Lexington Market. Again, I would like to see all of you lovely, pretty smiley faces from every house. Whether you're uh, 007, whether you're in a house, whether you're Kiki Singh, come see me. Come come see what the, the fuss is about. Let me show you how much I love you through this passion of food that I actually serve. Yeah. What's your slogan again? What's your motto? My motto is to reduce. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Everything is made with love. That's my motto. <laughs> Everything is made with love. And I do stand by that. Awesome. Oh, and just if some of you going to be at the con cookout, we are doing some of the food for the con cookout here in D.C. Um, so you kind of if you haven't um, yet uh, tasted anything of mine, that would be the place to be. Memorial Day weekend. I think that is on that uh, Sunday. 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 The football is on this Saturday. The cookout is on this Sunday. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, um, and again, uh, James, if you're watching, thank you for, uh, again, trusting me. His mother normally do his cooking for um, his events. And um, for him to reach out to me and trust me with the um, for this, uh, this, 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 this task, I appreciate it. And again, thank you for all of the houses and all the support that has been shown to me. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For what you're doing with the community, because I mean, you could just be cooking and making money, honestly, but all of the community work that you're doing with your business yes. and, and in addition to just the cooking part is awesome so yeah definitely yeah. thank you um, for all yeah, we're you definitely about we're definitely about community giving back here so yeah so don't be surprised if we end up hitting you up and being like okay we need a caterer for something because we yeah. always <laughs> use people in the community when we do absolutely things. absolutely I will say, God told me if I, if I build it, you guys will come. So I'm just following. I'm I'm being obedient to Him, and it's it is showing. It's it's showing. He said, "You listen. You be humble, and you you respect what I'm telling you, and you give back. It will it will, it retrickles back, and that's what that's what He's been doing. So I'm only grateful for Him upstairs and to all my participants and my customers. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Kenneth, and continue doing good work. Yeah, thank, thank you so you, much. Man. Y'all have a good night. And I'm not nervous no more, Dante. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't be. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, All right. right, good people. Are we ready? Are our ladies ready for part two of this panel? We have a few more questions left. Um, 
people are still hanging on, people are still watching. So I will bring up the ladies. Yes, and as we bring them up, y'all go ahead and share this live again. Share this live again. Share this live again. As we bring back the beautiful mothers. For our Mother's Day panel. Yeah. <laughs> You're on mute, Shannon. We can't hear you. You're on mute. You're on mute. We can't hear you. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't give y'all no like intro, right? The little claps, <laughs> the applause. Mm. Well, let's kick cool. it off because I know some of these and things like that. All right, I got his show after this, so I got it. I'm in his studio right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I need uh, Sasha to get me some Popeyes or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um. So I actually have the next question. Um, how do you feel about ballroom going mainstream? Well, I saw it. Um, so I don't have a problem with it, um, but I do think um, we definitely need to like give homage and give you know show more love to the um, to his, you know the people that came before us and made it possible for us. To do it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my only thing I can say. But for me, I, I love it. You know, I think it's, it gives us a place for us. You know, and some of us will be able to get some more. You know, we make some money. Yeah. Well, I can say, um, for me, um, I think uh, sometimes when things um, begin to go mainstream, they can tend to dilute it. Uh, for example, uh, uh, and it can change. It can change a lot about what we do. Even when uh, RuPaul's Drag Race came around, you know, being a showgirl, um, RuPaul's Drag Race gave drag queens a platform um, that a lot of us entertainers didn't have. Uh, the trans women they were only catering to drag queens, and not only that, you know, people that probably started doing shows two days ago were able to go on this television show and then come off of it and have a, a booking fee that I could only dream of. Um, and so and then and so it started to push entertainers that have been doing it for a long time. It started to push us back and we weren't able to get the the uh, appreciation that we deserve. And so I think uh, but when it comes to ballroom being mainstream, I think it it need it needed to happen because ballroom has influenced so many celebrities that we that we revere and worship. You know, from 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 Diana Ross on down to Beyonce, they have been influenced by what the girls were doing in ballroom. And not only that, the same uh, this a lot of the the gay men that are and and trans women and stylists that are makeup artists. Um, that are hairstylists that were that do us in these balls were able to put this on these celebrities. Even like when I look at people like Cardi B, you know, she has a, a wonderful team, a, a, a trans woman as a makeup artist, a trans woman as a hairstylist. She, mm -hmm. you know, she has Colin as her as her her designer. You know, the things that we have done now these these celebrities are being celebrated for our our. So I think mm -hmm. with us going mainstream, we now have the opportunity to say, this is where it comes from. This is where it originates from. This is where all of these, when you see these celebrities with this outfit on, it's like, girl, I saw somebody do that 15 years ago. I saw somebody mm -hmm. wear that 15 years ago at a ball or at a pageant. So now we're finally getting the credit to say, no, we started this and we did this. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword with it. I just hope, I, I just, when I do see it on mainstream, I just want us to continue to be authentic and true to ballroom. Yeah, yeah. It's funny you said that I had, I was just on, a, um, on the Savage Chat show last week for the same thing. I was just like, you know, a lot of things we see in ballroom, we end up seeing it on like the runways or in music videos. I'm like, wait a minute. Didn't so-and-so -so have that effect on this? Shannon, that's happened to you a couple times. I know, I, you know, and I'm like, wait a minute. You know, they better get back credit. So yeah, absolutely. Anybody else? But the sad part about it is that our ballroom community don't uplift that message when we put it out there because right. they're so busy trying to ride the celebrity coattail and it's not fair to us. This mm -hmm. is our intellectual property. 
-hmm. is no different than they'll sue us if we did something. So Quickly. why can't we just sit up there and say what the facts and truths are? Yeah, but I also, true. because I've been put in this position recently <laughs> and I'm a very strong person and I have no problem speaking my mind. Um, and a lot of people don't understand it because I know where bullshit is mm -hmm. and I speaks up and I'm not only going to speak up for myself, I'm going to speak up for everybody in ballroom because I come, I come into ballroom in a, in, from a very genuine, pure place that I know how hard it is. Ballroom people, I see it every day. They're the brave ones. Mm -hmm. They don't know how much you are brave that you have gone against everybody in your life, mm. your community, the government, when you, and nobody Ooh. celebrates you, mm -hmm. but then you have your counterparts to get celebrated mm -hmm. for doing what you've done all your life. Mm -hmm. In my book, that's not being brave and that's not commendable. It's nothing against you, but I'm not going to celebrate that. Mm -hmm. um, and you might not be a bad person and don't get me wrong by saying that it's just the truth. So I think we all have to have an accountability that we, and we have to check each other that no, I'm not going to allow you to do this to this underserving group of people mm -hmm. all so that you can sell something. I won't be a part of that. And it's okay. You got to know if you have a good me, I have a good relationship with God um, and a higher power that I know it's okay to walk away from something because something else is for me. That's yep. not for me. Um, and you have to be well with that. Um, and it's it's not okay to, to jump on somebody else or to knock somebody else down to make yourself be bigger so somebody can see you. They already see you, baby. They already know you. It ain't mm -hmm. nothing that nobody can do and can't nobody take it from you. What already God has already planned for you, it's for you. So I think it's our duty if we're going to let it become mainstream that we showcase what real ballroom is when we have the ability to show it. Speak up against something and also learn how to play the game better than they do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Anybody else have thoughts about ballroom going mainstream? No. I think ballroom is not really mainstream. It's just piece, pieces of it. Pieces of it are mainstream. You know, they don't really get the the idea of what ballroom is. Ballroom is half. Ballroom is, you know, it's complete competing but also embracing who you are no matter what kind of you walk you know and mm -hmm. now that it now it's more based of, of dancing more than ballroom it's not really showcasing the talent that's in ballroom mm. it's it's basically an act so when so it is kind of like taking away something that we've created and then rewriting it mm -hmm. so that they can make money off of it, you know? And that's the problem that I have with it. But at the same time, it is an open door for other people to see what ballroom is about. But I just wish that they showcase that part before they move into a different way of showing it you know like let let it be like a, a story a documentary or something that really showcase like talent that's in, in, the, in the ballroom and and what people give in the ballroom. like some people give their whole life to ballroom you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and, and so it's important to show that because that is what is the legacy of ballroom. So, and you know, my, and you, my yeah. take on it. And you know what? Um, too. I, I mean, I definitely I concur with, with with all of you. 
Um, but I do think at some point we have to move into a direction of trying to get there. And sometimes we have to bite the bullet and sometimes we have to suffer some of the con uh, suffer some of the consequences mm -hmm. to get to that point in order to say, okay, once I get to this point, now maybe I can have the power to, to, to bring the community to the forefront. You know what I'm saying? And I think that some of the, uh, the things that we have now, uh, it's just about what we do with it. Mm -hmm. It's about what we do with it after the fact. So we can't get anywhere from the bottom. But once you have an avenue and a door open to, to get to the top, once you get there, then you have a lot of resources and a lot of different people are coming at you to, to help you, to assist you, to bring what we really want people to see. You know, and, and we really want people to see the like the underground of ballroom, you know, getting dressed at one o'clock in the morning, going to a ball at two and three. You know, we want that's what we want people to see. We want people to see us getting ready for categories. We want people to see us um just the excitement of it all. You know what I'm saying? Like going through the doors, watching the houses, going to the tables, you know, just listening to different people's stories. So, um, you know, sometimes we just have to do certain things to get to a certain point. And once we get to that certain point, then the doors are open and then we can also start to move in a direction of greatness and try to showcase, you know, to the best of our ability. Because I've said a lot of times, like, I never want someone to utilize what we have and, and, and continue to tarnish it in their way. Um, cause they were like going on, on back there, you know, um, they didn't, they didn't know a lot, but the fact remains the same is that we're from the community. Um, so we can still talk about things and we can still bring things up in order to continue to try to educate them the best way we possibly can until we get to the point to where we don't have to do that. We can just do our, and tell our story ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, can I say something that I'm not Um, but I feel like Baltimore really have a book so genuine at the moment. Um, when those stories were being told, and, like they were doing it unknowingly. I was telling the stories unknowingly when I was out there broken. Or when I was walking one way and I was feeling it against the current, I was making a moment. That's something that just happened. It was like a spot. So we really can't, it would never be go ball. It would never really go mainstream, but the pieces that they decide and oh, we let them get. Um, I think we definitely need to structure that part um, a little bit more and a little bit better, more wiser, so us to, for us to even get ownership. Because when we give pieces away, we can have our own it, um, the right way. So I think if we're going to um, give pieces away, I, def I think we need to be more hands-on to structure it. Because they're only doing what they know or you tell them. So and yeah, there's only two people on there. They're not telling our whole, everyone's story. They're only telling theirs. Mm -hmm. what they from their eyes. Yeah. And I think all of your answers kind of like, because we ask this question oftentimes on panels and y'all basically summed up all of the answers that we usually get too. So it seems like as a community, we're kind of all on the same page when it comes to this. So I think the thing next is just us figuring out how do we go about this? How do we get more control? How do we say, okay, all right, as a community, when we have people doing these gigs and stuff like that, y'all need agents, y'all need agencies, y'all need people looking over these contracts that you're demanding what you want because at the end of the day, you are the talent and there is no show without the community. So I think it's just us getting to a point of us seeing that, us making sure that they're also including the history and all of that because we're all on the same page. Um, Kenya, I think we're on the last question of the night, right? Well, can I say one last thing to that? Absolutely. Um, the biggest problem that I see is that there's no representation behind the scene that looks like us. You can't have somebody come in when you're coming into a 98% dominantly African-American, especially 100% or 99.9% um, people of color and nobody behind the scene is of color. They will never understand. They will never get when you try to explain that to them, it's you being difficult because you're trying to explain what you are used to doing. And I don't think we at Ballroom realize how beautiful and talented we are. Those people go and make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to do what we do every freaking day and they cannot do it like we do it. 
Nope. They cannot do it. I seen it. They can't. They will try to take out. That's why they want to try to emulate and take everything that we do and try to bottle it up and try to figure out how are you doing it. I can show you, and you still won't. You need me. That's when you know your work. You need me. Know your work. That's some good now. That's good. Yep. All right, Dante, you got the last question? Yeah, so our last question, always, whenever we ask this, because we always ask this one too, I just always always think back to Beyonce's video when they like, Miss um, <laughs> Thurboard. But anyways, um, what is the legacy you hope to leave behind after you're no longer in the scene um, and have moved on? How do you want to be remembered? Anybody can go. Well, for me, um, I even though I'm the, the I, newest girl, honey, the girl in the picture, bitch. <laughs> Lola got a delay. She can't hear you. It's talking. Oh, <laughs> oh can, 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 we may want to go to the single sorry, shot. Sorry, <laughs> so they can. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I, I just want, I, I want to be the most noticed for to, uh, being that person that uh, if she put her mind to it, she accepts. Um, I want to. I want people, when I'm no longer here, I want people to say, bitch, every time Giselle hit that stage, she was no joke. Mm. Um, aside from the stage, I want people to be able to say that Giselle knew who she was in the glitz and glamour, out of the glitz and glamour, and never forgot who she was. She was always a personable person, um, lots of fun, polished. I, I just want people to remember all the things that I've worked so hard to become. I don't want that to ever be forgotten. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that's really all I can really, you know, formulate in my mind because it's, it's so broad as to what I want to be remembered for, but that's just a little bit of what I want people to remember me for. Okay. Anybody else want to go? Stasha, we go. I thought you got to leave at 10. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this I think this question always, it's been kind of like down, but it's not a down thing because it might not, it don't mean when you're gone, it just may mean when you're done with the same stuff. So. It's just the imprint you want to leave on the world. Well, what the world or the ballroom? I'm gonna just say the ballroom because we talking about. Yes. Um, it's I don't know. For me, it's tricky. Oh, you going? You go. Oh, go, 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 go. go. Uh, <laughs> you got to go. Put my back up there. <laughs> okay, so I um. For me, I think my legacy will be, um, it's, it's already written in the cards. Um, she will always, always, it doesn't matter if you like her, what your view is. One thing that she did, she actually showed us the most utmost respect and love. She kept coming at every single time, at the time, at the time, at the time. We can't get rid of that bitch, because <laughs> you can't. I'm here forever. Right here, stamp. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thank you. Oh, you're muted, Stasha. Yeah, I was say. Oh, I'm crazy. No, she was. Oh, oh she's crazy. Oh, crazy. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. I got you. Okay. <laughs> um, that's not this. This we question. gonna see each other tonight. Uh <laughs> This question is, uh, it's, I don't, it, it's kind of, it's kind of tricky a little bit, um, because I've always been the one that, that never really felt like she was respected or accepted in the scene, right? Um, maybe because I just didn't look like everybody else. Um, I didn't look like the rest of the girls. Um, and, and I think that book separated me from a lot. Um, me just being different. Um, me bringing something that 
they didn't want to accept or didn't want to enjoy or like. Um, so I feel like, honestly, you know, my legacy is already out there. Like when you look at the Femme Queen face category, I mean, what do you see? You see makeup, you see hair, you see jewels, you see rhinestones, you see coats, you see all of that. And that was something that they didn't want in, in that time, you know? They didn't want to accept it, and I got criticized for it so much. I got put down a lot for it, but I kept doing it because I knew I was staying true to me, and I never wanted to look like the rest. I always wanted to be different. So I think that's the legacy for me that's that's already there, you know, and that I'm gonna always put on a show, you know, no matter what. When I hit the floor, I'm gonna put on a show. I'm gonna make you know it, no matter what the case may be. I'm gonna take the children up. They gonna. Be they feet, they're gonna beat the stage, they're gonna holler, the camera's coming out, all that. I'm always gonna entertain the people. So I think that that's something that um, legacy of mine that I felt that I've definitely um, left behind because honestly, I don't plan on walking anymore. Um, legendary was it, okay? <laughs> and before that, it was years, okay? That ain't fair, why? You need to walk. No, it's not, I mean, like I've been walking, <laughs> I was walking, I started walking at like 90, like 96, 97, like it's 2020. It don't matter, Cher is still walking. I do. All is still walking. Girl, you know, you, the day that you be in your castle where you stop walking. I just, I just honestly feel like, you know, for me, you know, like I wanted something different. You know what I'm saying? And I think when, when you're, when you're doing something for so long, like I started out in the pageantry world, then I moved into, then moved into ballroom. And honestly, I feel like I've done amazing. Me, personally, I think I did amazing in both. Um, if you like me or not, if you enjoy what I brought, if you don't enjoy my face, if you, um, I mean, just, it's just whatever. If I don't look like the rest of the girls, or you can you know, it's just, it's whatever. I felt that I've done an amazing job and left a great stamp on both. And, I just don't see myself continuously walking anymore because I felt like I've done it. Like there's no way that I want to continue to be out there walking against girls that are 20 and 30 <clears throat> and 30 <laughs> and stuff. You know what I'm saying? You gonna give it your mom. I, I just don't want to see myself still doing that. I, I, I want more for me and I want to always grow. And I think evolving in life is something that's very important. Like you start somewhere to get to somewhere else. And I think every step that I've taken um, has definitely uh, taken me to a great place in my life, you know? Um, and also just like getting closer to God, like all that was a part of my journey of leaving ballroom. Um, I always carry God with me, but leaving ballroom and, and, and getting to a different place in my life and just, and just knowing, you know, what I wanted. Um, I wanted a better relationship with him. I wanted to understand him. I wanted to understand where he was going to take me. Um, so I just had to alleviate a lot of things that I felt personally was not good for me or that I felt toxic for me. Um, love ballroom to death. Um, I only show up when it's somebody that's in my family. Uh, like this little young, this little red young man up here, this father up here, that's, he always gets me. That's why I'm sitting here now because of him, my nephew, because other than that, I probably wouldn't have been here, but you know, I just, I just want, I want more. Um, I want more. I want something different, and I'm going to continue to work for that. And I will still always support those um, in the community. I will support uh, different families that that have different events and different things like that. But I just want something more. It's time for something more for me. That's beautiful. Um, shout outs to the legendary Michelle too. She's watching. She put a few comments up there as um, you were talking. All right. Um, we have a guy. Asia, um, Asia, Amaya, and Lola. Amaya, quiet. You go <laughs> I'm not. Um, so I guess I'll jump in. Um, I guess the legacy that I would want to leave is authenticity. Um, I came into the scene very young, and I think, like Sasha said, they had um, a certain way of doing things. And um, I'm really happy that I decided to do things myself. I think that that's kind of what it's about. Sometimes you have to go against the grain. And I say that to say, like, I remember when I first came out and I was trained and I was walking balls, the attention 
from the YouTube videos, like just the pictures and the photos. I was on MySpace and stuff, but I say that my ball clips were the ones that really garnered a lot of attention, that put attention on me being trans. Um, like, and at that time I was in a relationship um, with a guy who, who a lot of his family or a lot of people didn't know. So I say that to say, I remember, I think I had a conversation with Tempest about it and a few of my other older sisters, but it was like, you know, like I had posted a side-by-side -side photo. Um, and I'm pretty sure that I wasn't um, the first person to do that, but I think that what made it so shocking to people is because nobody, uh, like at that point, um, girls like us, girls who are passable and who are real, stood in their transness. Uh, when you looked a certain way, you got a certain age and you left your hometown. And uh, like that was just kind of the plan. And I think with me standing uh, like in my transness and doing that at that time, I didn't know, but I'm so proud of that. And I want that to be part of the legacy that I leave because you can stand in your truth and you can be yourself and you can still, I think first and foremost, I'm a woman. It's not because of a surgery I've had or things that I've done, it's because it's in my heart and it's always been that way. So I think that me being comfortable with myself like that, I would hope that my legacy shows other ladies that you can be trans and be proud, but still be a woman and be who you are. It's no box that you have to fit in. And I think that that's really um, kind of the message that I want to push, that you're entitled to live your life the way that you want to and make your own rules. And um, I am happy that I did it because I feel free. So I would wish that for everyone. Mm. Love that. Um, so, um, so, go ahead, Asia. Okay, so I feel like my legacy is like the cover. Okay. Um, no matter how you slice the cake, I feel like my evolution is what people want to say. Um, and I just want everyone around me or just the people who are coming to know that it's possible. No matter who you are, anything of that nature, you can be whoever you want to be. Now and I just you know I just want to do it differently just go around and I just want to you know I have to throw my cake this time and just really say today so I just want to show the people around me like you know like what it is. Yes. 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 Lola. I think for me, the legacy when I leave ballroom would probably. I will probably want people to remember me as being a friend, someone that you can talk to, someone you can get inspired by, um, someone that you can see as, as being normal, but at the same time creative, and someone that, can, that you can reach out to. I, I want to be able to, to like not put the glam and really people see behind the glam and really get to know me. And because, you know, I come from such a small island and it's such an accomplishment for me to be here at this moment that I just want people to remember that, that you can come from anywhere around the world and be part of a community and be cherished and be loved and be a friend. And no matter what you go through in life, you know, you, you need to, to be that for other people so that they can be that for you, you know, and that's what I want to relay as a message. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, this has been great. Yeah. Oh, Kiana, yes, please. <laughs> Let's not forget about it, Kiana. <laughs> you on mute, I think, Kiana. Kiana, you're on mute. We can't hear you. Kiana. Okay, okay, I got it. There we go. <laughs> All right. All right, um, first of all, I just, before anything, I just want to just thank um, the amazing ladies that was on tonight. It was just a privilege and an honor to be in the middle. As far as um, me, you know, I would just say the legacy continues. Um, as long as I'm seeing a little piece of um, Kiana, um, and my kids and people who, um, that I made, um, to someone that I made a difference in somebody else's life on and beyond. 
that's just enough for me. That's just a legacy right there because it's always going to be a Kiana or a little bit of Kiana in them. That that goes a long way, and that's why I always say the legacy continues. That's it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so. I would say on behalf, as a co-chair, along with Tanya um, of the Capital Baldwin Council, when we put this together, like, we knew it was going to be amazing, but I think that it it, it, it exceeded. surpassed that. Um, yeah. Yeah, by thank far. Thank you all so much. I've known almost all of y'all with the exception of Giselle. Your energy, when I met you at um, traffic downstairs in the um, dressing room, it was just, I mean, your energy was great. Like, everything was about you great. Like I said, the rest of y'all I've known for over 10 years at this point. I'm so proud to see where y'all are, where y'all continue to y'all are continuing to go. Um, and I think it's important that the scene was able to see that not only are y'all yes. beautiful, but y'all also have brains. Y'all yes. have y'all have you know viewpoints on things. And that I think um, you said it earlier, Asia, that y'all aren't just pretty, but you know y'all have things to say as well. And so I think it's important that we showcase this. And like y'all said earlier, we have to see more of this because. Y'all are the mothers of ballroom, and it's important for y'all to be able to have a platform for people to be able to hear y'all speak. Absolutely, absolutely. We need to continue lifting up our women. Um, thank you. I can't, I can't echo what Dante said. And Kiana, thank you all. This was amazing. Um, thank you all for taking time out of your evening. Um, everyone looked beautiful. Like I can go on and on and on and on. This was, this was great. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone that's been watching and been commenting. There's so many comments I'm gonna have to comb through later. Um, yeah, thank you. And we'll be in contact about the question you asked earlier, Maya. We got you. Yeah, we got you. But I asked the important motherfucking question. You asked the important you. question. I got you. Don't worry, because I'll send the cons. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I love you ladies so much. I just want to say happy Mother's Day. Thank you for taking this time. You know what I mean? Um, yes. Yeah. You're like, I'm not going to be emotional, but it's rare when we're all together. But I love moments like this. Um, like, I think that we need to come together more. You know, like, I know a lot of the times it's not us, and I'll be brief, but it's like I have different relationships with all of you ladies. But if you notice, it took for us to link and connect beyond the scene. You know, sometimes it's a lot of interference. We don't really know the struggle, so I just love we were able to come together like this. And I love all of you. Listen, all you will have an open invitation if you ever want to come back on, if you have a topic you want to talk about, shoot a message to us. We will definitely, y'all have an open invitation to always come back. Bye. All right, take care, everybody. Good night. Take care. Bye, girls. All right, good night, everybody. Good night. Thank everybody for watching. Good night.